Hello everyone, welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. Today we are going to be taking a look at the coronary blood flow, or the blood flow that is actually going to the heart. So just to be clear, like you kind of know that there's blood flowing throughout the heart, throughout all of its chambers, basically all the time, like going from right ventricle to, or right atrium to right ventricle, left atrium to left ventricle. But as it's going through there, the heart isn't really getting any oxygen or nutrients. Whenever you need or whenever you have exchange between the blood and the tissues, you always require smaller blood vessels specifically leading to what's called capillary beds. So in this case, to get to those, what you'll see is that on the outside of the heart, you have these small blood vessels that lead to smaller blood vessels that actually go into the heart muscle tissue itself. So... This is going to be what we're talking about, and you can see that there's quite a few little blood vessels, and there's only f kind of a few main ones that we're actually going to be focusing on, so let's go ahead and take a look. So to get started with, you can see that there are red and blue blood vessels. Those are either going to be arteries for red in this case, and then veins for blue in this case. And to start off with the arteries, what we'll see is that there are two arteries that are going to actually branch off of the ascending aorta. And actually, the first branch is being very early. Here's the ascending aorta right at the beginning after the aortic arch. You can see that you have this small little branch that is kind of hidden behind the pulmonary trunk. This is the left coronary artery. And then this is the right coronary artery. So if I return the other half of the heart, you can see that you have the continuation of those two blood vessels, the left coronary artery and the right coronary artery. And both of those are going to continue along the heart to an extent, and what we'll see is that there are a couple branches that you should be familiar with. So from the left coronary artery, there are two branches that you should know, which is going to be this one that goes down the front. This is called the anterior descending artery or the anterior descending branch, or also called the anterior interventricular branch. So anterior interventricular branch or artery, that is going to be this, like one on the very front of the heart, coming off the left coronary artery. But although obscured by the oracle of the atrium here, you have another branch that is going to be going underneath that and then around the heart. So this one that's going around the heart towards the back, this one is called circumflex. So if you know what like circumnavigate means, like to go around something, this is going to be to circ or to go around the heart, circumflex artery. Now the right coronary artery also has a couple of branches as well, which includes this smaller branch over here on the right ventricle. This is called the marginal branch or the marginal artery. And then it is going to continue all the way to the back of the heart over here where once again you have another artery going between the ventricles. This is called the posterior interventricular branch. So posterior interventricular branch, that is going to be this one over here, which is going to be the last major coronary blood vessel that we'll talk about. But you do still have the veins. So as the blood vessels go into the heart, the blood also has to go back to the heart, or rather like normal circulation. So to get back to normal circulation, to return from the systemic circulatory system, we have these smaller veins. So to start off with, on the front over here, what we have is called the great cardiac vein. So running along with that anterior descending artery, this is the great cardiac vein, which is going to go up and then around the heart along with the circumflex artery, and then there's an artery that's also going to be kind of joining with this, which is called the posterior cardiac vein. So you have the great cardiac vein, as well as the posterior cardiac vein, and then it's going to lead to this large bulbous region called the coronary sinus. And that's going to be a pattern that we see with a lot of these veins, so let's continue on with the rest of them. So where you find that marginal artery or marginal branch of the right coronary artery, this vein is called the small cardiac vein. So, so far we had great cardiac vein, posterior cardiac vein, 
And then we also have small cardiac vein, which is going to be where you have the marginal artery. And then on the back where you found that in or the posterior interventricular artery, this is called the middle cardiac vein. So kind of along the middle, this is the middle cardiac vein between the ventricles on the back of the heart. But all of those veins are going to be going to your coronary sinus. And then your coronary sinus is going to return blood back to your like heart from your technically systemic circulatory system. But there's something that you might recall when we talked about the heart, which is that we had what's called the opening to the coronary sinus. So the coronary sinus is going to lead to the opening of the coronary sinus to return that blood back to your right atrium. And then once in the right atrium, it goes back along the path that we're all familiar with from right atrium, tricuspid valve, right ventricle, and onward. So be careful regarding like these smaller blood vessels, but take a look at the ones that you need to know. And furthermore, try to figure out which ones kind of run along with each other because that will help you with identifying them as well. So that's it for this one. But thank you for listening. Good luck with your studying, and I'll see you all next time.